This pyramid is sitting in China today. All right, it's 2,000 feet at the base, and it rises 1,200 feet. 1,200 feet. The Great Pyramid in Egypt, 450 feet. What the hell is melanin? Put more simply, in trade for solving all your most pressing domestic catastrophes, we are asking for every person in your country President Biden, and the informant alleges that President Biden and his family members engaged in a $5 million bribery scheme. Welcome to WTF Daily Fam. Hit that like, subscribe, comment and share. Let's get weird. There's a new force of nature at hand, stirring all over the world. They are the young people whom, frankly, we have failed who are angry, who are organized, who are capable of making a difference. They are a moral army. And the most important thing that we can do for them is to get the hell out of their way. Priceless. Remember these videos are for entertainment purposes only. Done by the Social Security Administration just came out and said that 53% of Americans make less than $20 an hour. To put into perspective just how outrageously low that amount of money is, the average cost of living in the United States has reached the record highest point it's ever been, and it's between $2,500 and $3,500 a month. It's just for your basic needs to be met. And if you're making less than $20 an hour after taxes, that's more than all of your money. Even more outrageous is that they found that for you to live comfortably in the United States right now, that means not paycheck to paycheck, you have money left over that you can save, you can buy a house and go on a couple vacations a year. Buy your Itself, it would $96,500 a year annually would have to be your income to live comfortably. And they said for a family of four, it would take $235,000. If you're making less than $20 an hour, that means you are making less than $40,000 a year. Not even half of what it would take to live comfortably. There is no job in America right now. I don't care if it's a bodega down the street on the corner. No job can justify paying anybody at any experience less than $20 an hour. It's unacceptable. You can make a case that minimum wage, federal minimum wage, should be $30 an hour. Right? We are all grossly underpaid wow. is the point. You gotta be trolling us with this outer space treaty. Look! It's the Flat Earth logo. I was on a live showing people the Antarctic Treaty and how many people have signed it, along with the Artemis Accords, which is about space exploration. The Outer Space Treaty was signed in 1968 and has more signatures than the Antarctic Treaty. All the world organizations have the Flat Earth map as their logo. This is for the World International Organization Committee of the United Nations. Yeah, United Nations, Flat Earth map. World Health Organization, Flat Earth map. The World Meteorological Organization, Flat Earth Map. The International Maritime Organization, You've got to be me. Flat Earth Map. I'm guessing all the world leaders know what the Earth looks like. This Outer Space Treaty was established just a year before the 1969 moon landing. So it's kind of convenient that first it was the Antarctic Treaty keeping us all out of Antarctica. And then even more people agreed to sign a Outer Space Treaty to control space exploration. And then, slap the True Earth logo right in her face. When you call the wrong daddy. Myra! 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 Myra, the screen's not frozen. The chains are still moving, stupid! Myra! Myra, you're a slut just like your mother! Amen. <laughs> the informant alleges that President Biden and his family members engaged in a $5 million bribery scheme during his time as Vice President. Director Abadi, is it true that the FBI has a report making those allegations? What the F? Uh, I'm not going to comment on that. Why is that? I'm just not going to comment on uh, information we received, investigations. Do you owe an obligation to the American people to be candid about evidence of corruption by the President of the United States? 
this is uh, an area that I'm not going to get into with you, Senator. Well, I understand you don't want to, and that's why people are mad at the FBI, because you're stonewalling and covering up serious allegations of evidence. No, I'm not going to comment on that, Senator. Would two, you agree? Two things, Senator. No sure. one's stonewalling. The 1023 you just said you refused was provided to answer the question. in response to a subpoena. To okay, the then House why did you refuse to answer my the, question? The pertinent information is there, and I reject your assertion that the why FBI is Why did you refuse to answer my question? I just answered your question. Okay. So, yes, you have a 1023. Do you have the 17 recordings? Yes or no? I'm not going to get further into this. So you're stonewalling. You can't say I'm not refusing to answer your question, but I won't answer your question. I'm going to answer within the parameters that we operate in. That's the problem. The FBI has right now an unlimited hubris that you believe you are unaccountable. Unbelievable. You don't believe you're accountable to the United States Congress, and you don't believe you're accountable to the American people. As I said before, your assertion, or anyone who makes the assertion that the FBI is politicized, I reject it wholeheartedly. It's wrong. The FBI is a great institution. When I go home to Texas, people ask me, should we abolish the FBI? Now, I tell them no, because you have heroes and patriots working for you that are catching child predators, that are catching terrorists. But you're sitting there happily erecting a wall to protect Joe Biden. There are not two standards of justice. There is only one. Will you provide to this committee Will you provide the FD-1023 and will you provide the 17 recordings so we can assess what is the evidence, the specific credible evidence that Joe Biden personally took a $5 million bribe from a foreign national? Senator, we will work with this committee, you and other members, to provide uh, the information within the parameters of the process. Will you provide the FD-1023, yes or no? I will take that back and we will work with our So you're not leader. answering that. Will you provide the 17 recordings? We will take that back and we'll work with you. So you're not answering that either. Did you investigate in any way, shape or form these allegations? Senator, once again, I'm not going to comment. So you're not going to say whether you did your job. We do our job to the very best of our We've ability. Got well, not here. You're not answering a single question to the American people. And you may think this is esoteric. I promise you, millions of Americans are concerned. You know who isn't concerned? Not a single Senate Democrat. We're going to go through this whole hearing. Not one Democrat will ask a question about this. You know who else isn't concerned? The corporate media who is joining with the Democrats in covering up this evidence. If Joe Biden is innocent... The evidence should be made public and demonstrate that he's innocent. But if he is not, is it true this informant who alleged that he personally took a bribe was an informant the FBI had relied upon previously in other investigations? Yes or no? In each and every uh, investigation that we have, all the work that we do, I, I the expectation no is that every I logical ask, avenue, avenue investigation be pursued. I asked you a yes or no question. Are you going to answer it? Yeah, I'm, I'm answering your question. Was the informant? Informant one you had relied on previously in other investigations, yes or no? Senator, we run down every piece of information. You're not answering it then. You're refusing to answer. So you're refusing to answer the question. To the fullest extent possible. You're refusing to answer the question. Wow. You can't make this ish up. Can you understand me? I'm the vice president We are space traders bearing exquisite gifts that will restore your nation to its former glory. Nearly limitless quantities of gold and precious metals that will instantly erase your deficit. Machines that will renew your rivers and your air. Cold fusion technology for a safe, cheap, and inexhaustible source of energy. All we ask in return is the delivery to our vessels five days from now Every child, woman, and man in your nation with at least 2,500 milligrams of melanin in their skin per square centimeter. What the hell is melanin? Put more simply, in trade for solving all your most pressing domestic catastrophes, we are asking for every person in your country that you would classify as black. Are you kidding? My, no. We are not. What are you going to do with them? 
Well, that does not concern you. We give you five days to decide, and the offer is non-negotiable. We will not try to coerce you in any way. Yet, I hope we can do some business together. Interesting, is it not? All of what you see today are all just cheap knockoffs of the past, shelved until they could figure out a way to maximize profit off of it, while producing it as cheap as possible. Check out this 1950s electric skateboard, or even further back, how about the 1940s? Now these technologies might not have been perfect back then, but it always amazes me how almost a hundred years ago and beyond, they're inventions just had so much more Whoa. diversity and innovation did you see that here's the auto pad the 1915 version of both electric and gas scooter i bet all these two-wheeled scooters you see are much more durable and reliable than those lithium-ion batteries we have now in our scooters the next one isn't battery powered but it's still pretty darn cool just shows another example of the many different varieties of awesome innovations on two wheels from our past that all seem more solid and well built than any cheap plastic thing we get sold to us today question everything friends until next time unbelievable the more we dig the more we find here we have an image of a diploma for the american pacific exposition and oriental fair for portland oregon in 1905 so 1904, they have the St. Louis World's Fair. One year after, we get this one in Oregon. This diploma is very interesting. As we go down to the bottom, we have a photo, and we can clearly see in the background two airships, both looking different. They normally don't show this form of transportation in these photos. They normally blank out the sky. But as we look up all of these countries, we see the big ones, and then we see Caucasia. Have any of us heard of a country in the 1900s named Caucasia? I personally have never heard of Caucasia, which is similar to Tartaria. All of these countries that we were never told about. But this one wasn't hundreds of years ago. This was 1905. So they are now, in my opinion, lying and telling us that Caucasia, or Caucasus, is a region that has a bunch of countries in it, including Russia, which we all know have connections to Tartaria. But let's take a look at this list again from 1905. They are already listing Russia on this map with Turkey, France, Holland, Germany, Switzerland, Italy. All of these are countries. They are not regions. I'll say it again. These are countries. Why would they then throw a region in there randomly? That doesn't make any sense. I think we are finding, in my opinion, that there is more land that we aren't being told about that was here in the 1900s. And I think Caucasia is being hidden from us right now. Welcome to episode 48 of my lunch break. I hope you're all having a great day. And if you're new, welcome. Caucasia, really quick, I wanna just throw this in here that there is another country that is clearly blurred out. I wonder if we weren't supposed to see that one. So we were given a photo with the airships in the background in the sky. So I went digging and found this photo from 1905, World's Fair in Oregon, showing more airships. And since I haven't really covered this topic yet on this channel, in my opinion, and a few others, this form of travel was all over the place. It wasn't just created in the 1800s and the Hindenburg event was used as a scare tactic to make these airships look faulty, removing this free energy form of transportation technology out of our lives. Do you really think that they put a gas in these airships the that would be so incredibly flammable and fly them over massive cities? Or does it make more sense that this Hindenburg event was a planned event to get rid of this free form of travel and wipe it from the history books? Here we have a photo of one of these airships sitting in between the two spires of the old world building. You can see that they use these spires to electrically charge these airships. And this was common knowledge. And in the very next photo, it's leaving the port. We are not given the truth about our history. This isn't something that we are ever told about in our mainstream schooling system all over the world. Do you find that odd? Let's keep digging. 
We see that the U.S. Army had this technology in the 1800s, as well as the Navy. Now, this is a photo from July of 1931, and we clearly have an airship charging at the top of this building. So we have a lot going on here, and this was within the last 100 years, an airship charging at the to top of me. this tower. Did you think they only charged at the top of buildings? Of course not. They had charging docks in the middle of the water. Here we have a photo of the U.S. Navy airship in 1924, charging from this boat. Now let's zoom in on this charging station to get a good look at what's going on here. Now this is a technology that we were never told about. This is hidden from our timeline, a clear proof that there is much more to the story than what we've been told, especially since this was not thousands of years ago and shows how easily history can be rewritten. This technology should be common knowledge at this point. Here we have another angle in Rhode Island of the charging taking place. These airships were not powered by gas or simply helium. And if we switch angles here, we can actually see the charging tool that was used right at the top of this tower. They're clearly about to connect to the airship. So this, in my opinion, is clearly explaining what's going on at the top of these old world buildings. They were charging stations for the airships. They have the same features, and I guarantee you that they still turn on, since this was not that long ago. And I'm going to take this time right now to answer a lot of people's question. Will we ever find the truth? As we keep uncovering more and more documented evidence, right now. we're going to find that the previous you? civilization was not that far in the past. And our current structures hold so much more technology than we ever truly understood. So in my opinion, Yes, we are going to find the truth about all of this. We are uncovering the truth faster and faster. And this community gets bigger and bigger, with more and more people sharing their thoughts and knowledge. The mainstream history is becoming comedy hour at this point. So we can clearly see that these buildings all around the world may have had a second purpose, but they were without a doubt here to generate free energy, specifically for airships. And once you realize this, then we can go deeper and ask the question, was the previous civilization capable of using these buildings to power their flight that were so much more powerful, so much faster, and so much more incredible than an airship? I believe that they fully understood this technology. They were the ones that constructed it. They had this technology and were able to travel through the air so much faster than we can today while using the Earth's natural energy. These buildings are technology. They are able to extract the energy and are able to turn it into a fuel. If you're looking for a why, a motive to suppress this technology, well, it would 100% benefit a civilization, us. It's free. There is zero benefit to free transportation, free energy. Do we need to go further for the why? So when you go around your town now, and see the top of these buildings, we can all understand how popular this form of transportation really was. It was everywhere. Now we have talked about Tartaria. We have shown in this episode, in the beginning, how there are possibly more countries and more land, such as Caucasia. So we have Tartaria, but we also have Barbaria, where you would get the term barbarians. And of course, again, have any of us heard of a place called Barbaria in history class? Maybe you have now. But in mainstream history, this is not something that is taught to us. We're not being told the truth about any of this. What do you and think? We have many maps of Smash a land the called like and Barbaria. Drop a comment below. And I believe that these cartoons were really trying to tell us something. Pay attention. The Legion of Doom is about to begin its reign of terror. Uh. Is it predicting or programming?
It's just weird how every single one of these cartoons always had something happening to Remember these to videos are for entertainment purposes only. Stay weird. I want some research on the New York City subway stations. And it's interesting because they said that the subway stations were founded in 1904. And they opened in 1905. So they were found, that's, that's what founded means, they were found in 1904 and they opened one year later. They didn't build them. Unbelievable. They just took ownership of these tunnels that are deep underneath New York City. And it's interesting because when you look at all of these tunnels, you sit there and think, okay, you go up above on the, on the, on the street, you got horse and wagon and all this stuff roaming around, but you're building these massive tunnels cutting through the earth. Take a perfect example, go outside, get a shovel and see how far you can go in the earth. Especially in a time around the 1900s where it's very challenging to do that. There's still construction photos. There's just like four people standing in front of a tunnel saying that we built it. You would think if you did the first subway ever that people are blown away that they could go in, you'd have photos galore. But you only have one photo of four people standing in front of a tunnel saying that you What do you found think? Or found it. Smash the like the and drop a comment below. A lot of very interesting things all over the world that will be shown to everybody here. Now check this place out. Look at the top of this thing. This looks like a machine, if you ask me. Those are totally Saint Paul's insane. Church. Where well, listen to this. Founded in 1846, where a fire destroyed the structure before it was completed. Another mystery lightning bolt on a sunny day, burning down palaces. That would actually be more information than we're given. And get this: people throughout the whole city contributed funds to build a brick replacement in 1851. And we, of course, have a destruction. Oh, no, I mean restoration Crisis. project going on inside. St. Stanislaus Church opening in 1891, where this one gives us the fakest depiction of the past I think that I've ever seen. Throughout all of this research, we have these horses sprinting across the lawn. Just your normal, everyday carriage ride through the front lawn. Not only did this thing get hit with a tornado, supposedly, but in 2002, the pastor was killed by brother Daniel. And to hide the crime, Daniel Montgomery set the parish and offices on fire. Montgomery later admitted to the crime and was sentenced to life in jail in 2005. So we officially finally have a guy pinned to the fire. I can't believe we were actually given the guy to burn down the building. I'm in shock. The Franklin Castle, built in two years. This is just an average time frame for the 1800s because they had no distractions, of course, and they were very hard workers, even though they didn't have a power tool and no training. In 1881 to 1883, this thing is all done. Michelle buys the Old World Castle in 1999. Unfortunately, that same year, the exact same year, a fire badly damaged the castle though extensive repairs were done. The house restoration could not be completed. And in 2004, a new owner cleaned the place up and the property was damaged again in March 2011 when the castle was damaged in a fire. And again, they have no idea who or how these fires are starting, which is insane. So the mainstream narrative is back to not knowing things. Newburgh Town Hall. Cleveland, Ohio, suffered a fire in November of 1984 and was demolished in 1985. St. Joseph's Church, a landmark church that was built in 1893, supposedly, and the church was closed in 1986. While plans for the future of the structure were being discussed, the church sustained a destructive fire in 1993 and was demolished. And at this point, we have found 19 fire narratives. Within a single city, we have found a total of 70 fires for the fire games playlist. And we can see that there is a clear pattern, a clear code that is fully understood at this point by us. We also know that the amount of destruction that has taken place to the old world structures would most likely blow our minds. The amount of demolitions that have taken place and will never be built back are in the thousands. And we know this. This research is so important for everybody to be aware of these buildings that are still here and fully understand these coded narratives. It's time for everybody in the world 
to understand this information, to be able to see through the nonsense that we have been told our entire lives. Is it real? And once you know the truth, there is no going back. You thought we were done? No, not yet. We have some breaking news. Something that happened about a week and a half ago. Something that will show you all that these fires happened in the past, but are still going on today. We are forming a team here, a team of people that are looking out for these structures of the previous civilization all over the world. We all understand what to look for at this point. And when this fire took place at the Stock Exchange building in Copenhagen, Denmark, I was no longer alone. I must have had 50 people commenting in the videos, messaging me, tagging me and posting about this fire. We are seeing what's going on around us now. And that's important because being able to see is the first step. And eventually, the bigger that we grow, I'm hoping there will be a way to put an end to this destruction. Because we have said this so many times, and it is so true. These buildings do not need our help. They do not need our current civilization's renovation tactics. We know that our civilization calls it renovation when it is clear destruction of the old world's work. We understand that these 1600 dates are complete nonsense at this point. It is from the previous civilization. This building was a very popular tourist attraction, of course. It was most noted for its distinctive spire, shaped as the tails of four dragons twined together. Dragons. We understand that dragons have been mentioned in many so-called ancient or medieval texts. Ancient and medieval. Two words that mean previous civilization in my opinion. Where on April 16th, 2024, the building was badly damaged by fire, which toppled the spire. What, you know, the F? The one that was showing us four tales of dragons. Any clues of the previous civilization are being wiped out and destroyed. We have seen this so many times. And how many buildings did we not see before this research that were destroyed and are gone now? When we read this final article and show the world that this is still going on today, a fire has engulfed Copenhagen's former stock exchange, one of the oldest and most well-known buildings in Denmark's capital, causing its spire to collapse onto the roof. The historic 17th century construction, also known as Borsen, had been under renovation when the blaze broke out. This is incredible and even more eye-opening. Here we go. The cause of the fire was, you guessed it, unclear. Remember these videos are for entertainment purposes only. This is the depiction of Genghis Khan. You're given in our perversion of history. This was the actual Genghis what, Khan. What, the F? The emperor of the Tartarian Empire. Not at all like the depiction of the savage warlord we're given in our history. Here's even an image of his wife and the depictions of princesses and princes of Tartaria. And on maps, you even show where the ancient kings of Tartaria were laid to rest. Unbelievable. This was certainly no placeholder name given to vast areas in the east that were not yet discovered by European cartographers. As our official narrative says, this was at a time a well-documented empire. Strange how the oldest existing writing ever found was called the Tartaria Tablets. This was not just a people technologically advanced, but a true free civilization. And why the parasites that are running things now worked hard to erase them from history. We are not made to know about these past grand civilizations and their advanced technologies. We are made to be told that we are in fact the most advanced civilization. When you perverse all true history of humanity, it makes us that much easier to control. Just one of many reasons why the Tartarian Empire had to go. Question everything, friends. Until wow. Next time. This pyramid is sitting in China today. All right, it's 2,000 feet at the base and it rises 1,200 feet. 1,200 feet. The Great Pyramid in Egypt, 450 feet. This one rises 1,200 feet. Feet. There are actually seven pyramids, flat-topped, with three carved giants resting along the outer edges. 
The four faces of the pyramids are, like so many ancient structures, aligned to the compass points. Traces of color remain on the sides, indicating that colors that were given to each side, east, aqua green, south, red, west, black, north, white, and on the, on the flat tops, traces of yellow. In 1946, a U.S. Army airplane crew rediscovered and photographed these pyramids from the air place 26 skyscrapers the size of the Empire State Building and you have the volume of the largest Shinsei Pyramid. What the F? Right. You ever hear of that? I hadn't either. Just wanted to tell you. We weren't building 20-story buildings until 1900. And they're still here. These, these structures, by the way, boys and girls, have withstood time for thousands of years. Great mountains of the uh, Peruvian Andes are awesome enough until you gaze up those extremely steep slopes and you perceive the death-defying ruins perched on top of these mountaintops. The setting is terrifyingly wild. Mountains miles high vanishing into the sky, notched with narrow ledges, slashed with ravines and bottomless gorges. Waterfalls of an awesome beauty plunge from these immaculate snowy peaks down into the damp, unknown depths of the canyons. So rare. Remember is these the videos are for entertainment the purposes only. Are obliged to stop every ten paces to catch their breath. A vanished civilization set gems in stone, astonishing, and astoundingly assembled polygonal walls suspended over the abyss. They carved practically vertical stairways up stupendous precipices. High in the clouds rises one acrobatic stairway of 64 steps, which had to be carved in a place where one could only get a toehold for support. Another comprised of 600 steps. Unbelievable. Just imagine that. Now, these ingenious jewels, or jewelers in rock, ascended a dizzying mountain, no wider than the blade of a sword, and topped it with watchtowers and walls, pierced with lookouts. The mountain drops away so abruptly that if a workman slipped, his body would not hit the bottom for 3,000 feet. You've got to Today, be on me. all sides, the ruins of temples, fortresses, and towers surmount the peaks and cling to the vertical sides of the canyons like ivy. Overlooking a waterfall, a splendid palace rises above the fierce abyss, impossible to reach. Are these real How or not? was this palace built? What do you think? Terraces were miraculously inlaid into vertical slopes, perched over the canyon fault. How did they hoist up heavy, carved rocks by the thousands? Site after site is built atop bluffs, which are too steep to be accessible. Many seem to have been literally hurled up as though a monstrous, or the monstrous stones flew there. A high carved niche opens out over the abyss, under a ridge shaped like the letter I. The rock was leveled and encrusted with carefully joined stone cubes. Only a daring mountaineer hanging from a rope could possibly reach it. The builder magicians, I tell you, had no sense of the impossible. Everywhere loom buildings that defy the laws of equilibrium and gravity, as well as vertigo. These are a triumph of human daring and of technology which almost smacks of science fiction. And would you believe it? Sometimes the enormous blocks were brought from quarries more than a thousand miles away. Priceless. It isn't being built by muscle labor. It's being built by some kind of machines and mechanical labor. Now, many are covered with intricate carvings. No man alive could duplicate such carvings with the stone tools that we find. As Hyatt Varel remarks, it is not a question of skill, patience, and time. It is a human impossibility. Man, we're just taking think? a look at it, boys and girls. Smash the like and drop like a comment below. Lumpen. Lover boys, certified pedophiles. Bro, he got hurt a lot, bro. 
He said certified, bro. Yeah, fuck him up. Pop, 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 pop. I'ma do my stuff. Why you trolling like a bitch? Ain't you tired? Trying to strike a chord and it's probably a minor. Oh! A minor. Bro. <laughs> Well, that's it for today, folks. Don't forget like, share, subscribe, leave a comment with suggestions of what you would like and videos you would like to see. Until next time, fam.